Disturbing True Scary Home Invasion Horror Story The Nightshade Intruder In a quiet suburban neighborhood where the biggest events were block parties and yard sales, the Davis family's home stood as a testament to their hard work and happiness. However, one chilling autumn evening, their sense of security was shattered, giving rise to a story that would ripple through the community for years to come. The night started like any other, with the family of four settling in after dinner, the children playing in the living room while the parents cleaned up. Suddenly, the calm was broken by a soft but persistent tapping on the back door, thinking it was just a neighbor or a stray animal. Mr. Davis went to investigate, finding nothing but the swirling leaves of the windy night. As the evening progressed, the tapping returned, now louder, more insistent, and accompanied by a faint whispering sound, like someone murmuring just out of sight. Unease turned to alarm when Mrs. Davis noticed that the family dog, usually calm and friendly, was growling lowly, her gaze fixed on the dark windows. The family decided to lock down the house and activate their security system, attributing their anxiety to the stormy weather and the late hour. But as they tried to settle down, the lights flickered ominously and the tapping evolved into a thudding, as if someone or something was trying to break in. Mr. Davis called the police, reporting a possible intruder, while the family gathered in the living room, trying to stay calm. Before the police arrived, however, the thudding stopped abruptly, replaced by an eerie silence that seemed to press against the windows. When the officers searched the property, they found no signs of forced entry, but they did discover a set of unfamiliar footprints leading from the back garden to the house and then back to the street, disappearing into the night. The footprints had an odd, elongated shape, unlike any shoe or bare foot, leaving the police puzzled and the family frightened. The incident was written off as an attempted break-in, but the Davis family couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. Over the next few nights, the tapping and whispering returned sporadically, always when the house was at its quietest, sending chills down their spines. Determined to uncover the truth, Mr. Davis installed security cameras around the property. What they captured was chilling a shadowy figure, indistinct yet unmistakably humanoid, seemed to flit around the edges of their home, never fully visible, but clearly there, its movements unnatural, almost floating. The story could continue with the family's escalating terror as they seek to understand the nature of their nocturnal visitor. Delving into local lore and histories that hint at an old, forgotten tragedy tied to the land their house was built on. As the Davis family grappled with the reality of their situation, the disturbances grew more frequent and intense. The shadowy figure captured by the security cameras began to appear more clearly, its form gaunt and elongated with eyes that seemed to reflect the moonlight. Its presence was accompanied by a cold, suffocating air, and the once inexplicable whisperings became more coherent, whispering the name Elias repeatedly. The family, desperate for answers, turned to the local library and town records for any clue that could explain their tormentor. Their research led them to the story of Elias Nightshade, a reclusive figure from the town's early history, whose home once stood on their property, known 
for his eccentricities and rumored to be involved in occult practices, Elias vanished under mysterious circumstances, and his home was eventually demolished. Its land left untouched until the Davis family built their house. Connecting the dots, they realized that their home's disturbances coincided with the anniversary of Elias Nightshade's disappearance. The family sought the help of local historians and a medium to contact the spirit and uncover what it wanted. During a seance in their living room, the medium summoned the spirit of Elias, who revealed that he was not there to harm the family, but was bound to the land, searching for something lost when his house was destroyed. He spoke of a hidden artifact, an amulet that he claimed held the power to free him from his earthly bindings. The Davis family, skeptical but desperate to end their nightmare, agreed to search for the amulet, guided by the spirit's cryptic clues. Their search uncovered a hidden cellar beneath their home, where they found antique belongings, strange symbols etched into the walls, and finally, the amulet, glowing with an eerie light. The story pauses here, as the family stands before the unearthed amulet, uncertain of its true power and the spirit's intentions. Will returning the amulet to Elias Nightshade bring peace to their home? Or will it unleash something even more terrifying? The mystery of the Nightshade intruder remains, with the family caught between their desire to help and the fear of what might come next. As the Davis family delved into the history of their home, and the surrounding land. They uncovered unsettling stories about the previous occupants and the property's original use. The land, it turned out, had once been part of a vast estate owned by a reclusive and eccentric figure known only as Mr. Nightshade, who was rumored to have been involved in occult practices and alchemy. The shadowy figure captured on the security cameras began to appear more frequently. Its presence no longer confined to the perimeter of their property, but now approaching the house itself, the family started to experience other strange phenomena. Objects moving on their own, cold spots in various rooms, and an overwhelming sense of dread that pervaded the house after sunset. With each passing night, the whispering grew louder, becoming more coherent. It was as if the figure was trying to communicate, speaking in a language that was on the cusp of being understood. The family's dog refused to go outside after dark, and the children complained of nightmares featuring a man with eyes like dark voids, whispering secrets from the shadows. The Davis family, seeking help, reached out to local historians and paranormal investigators. Together, they unearthed old newspaper clippings and journal entries from the town's archives, revealing that Mr. Nightshade had vanished under mysterious circumstances, with locals whispering about a dark legacy left behind and a hidden room in his estate unspeakable rituals were conducted. One of the investigators, specializing in the paranormal, suggested that the figure and the disturbances might be connected to Nightshade's legacy, possibly tied to an artifact or a sealed room that was part of the original estate, now buried beneath the Davis family's home. Armed with this knowledge, the family decided to explore the property's old structures, finding a sealed cellar under the garden shed that was not on the house's original blueprints. The cellar's entrance was covered in strange symbols that matched those found in Nightshade's journals. The story pauses as the Davis family, along
along with the investigators, stand before the sealed cellar, contemplating the dark history of their home and the potential link to Mr. Nightshade's mysterious past, preparing to uncover what lies beneath and the true nature of the nocturnal visitor haunting their nights. As the Davis family delved into the history of their home and the surrounding land, they uncovered unsettling stories about the previous occupants and the property's original use. The land, it turned out, had once been part of a vast estate owned by a reclusive and eccentric figure known only as Mr. Nightshade who was rumored to have been involved in occult practices and alchemy. The shadowy figure captured on the security cameras began to appear more frequently. Its presence no longer confined to the perimeter of their property, but now approaching the house itself, the family started to experience other strange phenomena. Objects moving on their own, cold spots in various rooms, and an overwhelming sense of dread that pervaded the house after sunset. With each passing night, the whispering grew louder, becoming more coherent. It was as if the figure was trying to communicate, speaking in a language that was on the cusp of being understood. The family's dog refused to go outside after dark, children complained of nightmares, featuring a man with eyes like dark voids, whispering secrets from the shadows. The Davis family, seeking help, reached out to local historians and paranormal investigators. Together, they unearthed old newspaper clippings and journal entries from the town's archives, revealing that Mr. Nightshade had vanished under mysterious circumstances with locals whispering about a dark legacy left behind and a hidden room in his estate where unspeakable rituals were conducted. One of the investigators, specializing in the paranormal, suggested that the figure and the disturbances might be connected to Nightshade's legacy, possibly tied to an artifact or a sealed room that was part of the original estate now buried beneath the Davis family's home. Armed with this knowledge, the family decided to explore the property's old structures, finding a sealed cellar under the garden shed that was not on the house's original blueprints. The cellar's entrance was covered in strange symbols that matched those found in Nightshade's journals. The story pauses as the Davis family along with the investigators, stand before the sealed cellar, contemplating the dark history of their home and the potential link to Mr. Nightshade's mysterious past, preparing to uncover what lies beneath and the true nature of the nocturnal visitor haunting their nights. With trepidation, 
the Davis family, accompanied by the paranormal investigators, opened the sealed cellar beneath the garden shed. The air inside was stale and thick with dust. But as they descended, they noticed an unnatural chill that seemed to seep into their bones. The cellar was more extensive than expected, branching off into hidden tunnels that hinted at a network beneath the property, remnants of the old nightshade estate. As they explored, they found peculiar artifacts, ancient books, and alchemical equipment scattered around, all covered in decades of dust and cobwebs, untouched since nightshade's time. The further they ventured, the stronger the whispering became now clearly echoing through the tunnels. It was as if the voice was leading them deeper into the labyrinth. They followed the sound to a large vaulted chamber where the air vibrated with an unseen energy. In the center of the chamber stood a large ornate mirror, its surface swirling with a shadowy mist. The frame was adorned with the same strange symbols that were on the cellar entrance glowing faintly in the dim light. The whispering seemed to emanate from the mirror, its words just beyond comprehension. The investigators theorized that the mirror might be a focal point of the haunting, possibly a portal or a tool used by Nightshade for his rituals. As they approached, the temperature dropped sharply, and the whispering voice became a cacophony of voices as if multiple entities were trapped within. Suddenly, the shadowy figure from the security footage materialized before them, its form more defined in the chamber's eerie light. It resembled Mr. Nightshade, as depicted in the old portraits they found, but twisted and spectral, with eyes that burned with a dark inner light. The figure pointed towards the mirror and through the swirling mist within, scenes of the past began to play out like a silent movie. They showed Nightshade conducting rituals and experiments, slowly becoming consumed by the dark energies he sought to control, eventually trapping himself in a realm between worlds, his essence tied to the mirror. The story pauses as the Davis family and the investigators stand before the mirror. Confronted with the reality of Mr. Nightshade's fate and the possibility that his attempts to harness the supernatural have left a permanent scar on the property, they must now decide whether to attempt to sever Nightshade's connection to the mirror and free their home from its haunted past or to find another way to deal with the lingering presence that threatens their peace. As the ritual progressed, the chamber housing the mirror became the epicenter of a supernatural storm. The symbols etched into its frame glowed with an ethereal light, illuminating the room with the colors of the aurora. Nightshade's spectral form oscillated between agony and relief, reflecting his centuries-long torment and the prospect of liberation. The Davis family 
alongside the scholar and the investigators, chanted the ancient incantations, their voices harmonizing with the whispers from the mirror, creating a resonant frequency that filled the chamber. The air thickened, and reality seemed to warp around the mirror, the barrier between worlds growing ever more fragile. Within the swirling mist of the mirror, visions of Nightshade's life played out his initial forays into the supernatural, the height of his power, and the fateful ritual that bound him to the mirror. These images provided clues to the investigators and the scholar, guiding their actions during the ritual. As they reached the ritual's climax, the ground beneath them trembled, and a deep, resonant hum filled the air, emanating from the mirror. Nightshade's form began to disintegrate into tendrils of shadow, which were absorbed into the mirror's surface. His whispering voice, echoing words of gratitude and warning. Suddenly, the mirror's surface cleared, revealing a dark, void-like space beyond, where the outlines of other, more malevolent entities could be seen. Pressing against the invisible barrier Nightshade had held in place for so long, it became evident that destroying the mirror would release these entities into the world, while purifying it would restore the barrier, keeping the entities contained. The ritual's final phase required a personal sacrifice of memories and energy from someone of Nightshade's bloodline. A task the scholar accepted, being the last of his lineage, as he stepped forward, placing his hands on the mirror. His life's essence and memories flowed into the glass, reinforcing the seal and purifying the curse. The story pauses with the mirror's surface glowing softly chamber settling into a calm, the immediate threat subdued. The Davis family, the scholar, and the investigators looked on, weary but hopeful, aware that while they may have secured a temporary peace, the mirror remained a potent and dangerous artifact, its secrets and the entities beyond not fully understood or controlled. The future of the Davis home and the legacy of Nightshade's experiments with the supernatural hung in a delicate balance, suggesting that the battle to maintain the barrier between worlds was far from over. In the aftermath of the ritual, the mirror's glow faded and the chamber regained a semblance of normalcy. However, the Davis family and their allies could not shake the feeling that the events they had witnessed were part of a larger, more complex narrative tied to the mirror and the land on which their house stood. While the immediate danger had been averted and Nightshade's spirit was finally at peace, the scholar's sacrifice had opened new avenues of inquiry and concern. The entities beyond the mirror though still contained, were now known to them, their shapes occasionally flickering in the mirror's depths, a constant reminder of the potential threat. The family, along with the investigators and the scholar, who had survived the ritual, but was now visibly aged and weakened, decided to form a council to safeguard the mirror and explore the mysteries it contained. They dedicated themselves to studying the supernatural forces at play, using the vast collection of artifacts, books, and documents found in the tunnels beneath their home. As weeks turned into months, the Davis property became a center of paranormal research and supernatural studies. Experts in occult history, metaphysics, and leyline energies were brought in to consult turning the family's once ordinary home 
into a hub of activity and learning. Despite the collaborative effort, the mirror remained an enigma, its surface occasionally rippling with activity, hinting at the chaotic energies beyond. The council discovered that the mirror not only served as a gateway, but also acted as a reservoir of knowledge, containing the accumulated wisdom and experiences of those who had interacted with it, including Nightshade. Intrigued by this discovery, the Davis family and the council began to experiment with ways to safely access the mirror's knowledge without unleashing the darker forces it contained. They developed protocols and safeguards using a combination of ancient rituals and modern technology to probe the mirror's secrets. During one such experiment, a new figure appeared in the mirror's depths. Different from the malevolent entities seen before, this figure, shrouded in a cloak of starlight, seemed to beckon to them, offering answers yet also warning of the risks of delving too deep into the unknown. The story pauses here, with the Davis family and their council standing at the threshold of new discoveries and dangers. The mirror, once a source of fear and turmoil, had become a window to uncharted realms, promising knowledge and power, but also harboring threats that could unravel the fabric of reality. The balance between curiosity and caution remained delicate, as the mysteries of the mirror and the world beyond continued to unfold. In the quiet aftermath of the ritual, the Davis family, the scholar, and the investigators gathered their strength. The purified mirror, now a silent sentinel in the chamber, the scholar, weakened by his sacrifice but resolute, shared his remaining knowledge of Nightshade's legacy and the potential threats that still lingered beyond the mirror's surface. The entities trapped within the mirror's realm, though held at bay, were more aware of the living world than ever before. Their desire to break through intensified by the recent disturbances. The scholar warned that the mirror, now a beacon of supernatural energy, would require vigilant guardianship to prevent future breaches. Determined to prevent such threats, the Davis family decided to turn their home into a research and containment facility for supernatural artifacts. Working with the investigators and other experts in the field, they created a foundation to 
study the mirror and the broader implications of Nightshade's experiments, seeking to understand and protect against the darker aspects of the supernatural. Over time, the property became a nexus of paranormal research, attracting scholars, mystics, and scientists dedicated to exploring the unknown. The mirror was contained in a specially constructed vault, designed to suppress its energies and prevent any entities from crossing over. However, despite these precautions, strange occurrences continued to manifest around the property. Objects imbued with significant historical or emotional value began to exhibit unusual properties, and the land itself seemed to remember the rituals and events of its past, sometimes reacting unpredictably. Reports of these phenomena attracted the attention of both allies and opportunists, some drawn by curiosity and the desire to help, others by greed and the lure of harnessing the supernatural for their own ends. The Davis family found themselves navigating a complex world of alliances and rivalries, their home a focal point in a broader conflict over the control and understanding of supernatural forces. The story pauses as a new chapter in the Davis family's journey begins, with their home now a center of paranormal activity and research. They face the dual challenge of managing the legacy of Nightshade's mirror and the influx of external interests. The balance between the seen and unseen worlds remains delicate, and the true extent of the mirror's power and the secrets it holds continue to unfold, promising further adventures and trials for the family and their allies. As years passed, the Davis family's home became a well-respected center for paranormal research and supernatural containment. The mirror, the heart of many investigations, remained securely housed in its vault, its secrets gradually yielding to the concerted efforts of researchers from around the world. One autumn evening, akin to the one when the disturbances first began, a breakthrough occurred. A team of researchers, using a combination of ancient texts recovered from Nightshade's estate and modern technology, deciphered a series of inscriptions on the back of the mirror. These inscriptions contained the final piece of the puzzle to fully understand the mirror's capabilities and the nature of the entities it contained. With this newfound knowledge, the team devised a ritual not just to contain or purify, but to completely sever the connection between the mirror and the dark realm it accessed. This ritual required the collective energy and intent of all those affected by the mirror's influence, including the Davis family, the scholarly descendants of Nightshade, and the spirits that had been caught in the mirror's pull. On the night of the ritual, the entire community around the Davis estate, both living and spectral, united in a circle around the vault. As they chanted the ancient incantations, the mirror began to resonate, emitting a harmonious tone that grew louder and purer. The spectral entities shadows of the past once trapped by Nightshade's machinations appeared around the vault, their forms becoming peaceful and light. The ritual reached its zenith, and with a blinding flash of light, the mirror shattered, not explosively, but dissolving into fine, luminescent dust that floated harmlessly in the air. The connection to the dark realm was severed, releasing the trapped entities to move on and sealing off the path that had allowed such disturbances to enter the world. 
The land, once heavy with the weight of its history, felt lighter, as if a great burden had been lifted. In the aftermath, the Davis family's home transitioned from a containment center to a place of learning and healing, dedicated to understanding the supernatural in a way that harmonized with the natural world. The legacy of Nightshade's mirror, now a tale of caution and learning, served as a cornerstone of this new mission. The story concludes with the Davis family looking over their home, no longer a beacon of supernatural unrest, but a sanctuary for knowledge and growth. The mirror's final dispersion symbolized the end of old fears and the beginning of a new era, where the boundary between the seen and unseen was respected and safeguarded. In the end, the true power lay not in containing the darkness, but in understanding and integrating the lessons it offered.